right? So it was used as wages at one point in time. The word for salt is salarium, the Latin word, and that's where we get the word salt and the word salary, right? So we know that uh, salt was very important. Of course, light, what was the first thing God created? God created light, right? Light is such an element, such an important element in our lives. So first, Jesus tells these disciples in the first 12 verses that not only has God secured their futures through their faith and their trust in God, now he's giving them an additional blessing, that they are elemental people. You are salt and you are light. What does salt have to do with light? Well, we know that salt, again, has its various uses. It's almost like a, a magical compound. Like salt water, our bodies are filled with salt. We have salt in tears, we have salt in our blood, we have salt in a bead of sweat. Without salt, our hearts wouldn't beat properly, our blood would not flow, our muscles wouldn't work properly. When I was playing football for the two pitiful years that I played on those hot days uh, that we were practicing, there was always a big bowl of salt tablets that if you started to feel light in it, you grabbed a couple of salt tablets and you took those. You haven't figured out yet what I'm saying is salt really is an elemental part of our lives. So here we have Jesus speaking to his disciples on this mountain, having blessed them with the Beatitudes, and now he continues blessing them by telling them they are salt of the earth. And he didn't stop there. He then went on to say, you are light of the world. Now again, light is an elemental part of our lives. Jesus you know, the beginning of John's gospel, we're told that Jesus is described as the light that shines in the darkness that the darkness could not overcome. Jesus will say, I am the light of the world. Robert Louis Stevenson, when he was a boy, he watched the lamplighter go down the street lighting the gas lamps in his town. And he said to a friend, I'm watching a man put holes in the darkness. Jesus is the one who has come into the world to poke holes in the darkness of the sin of this world. But here Jesus is telling his disciples that they are light. They are the light of the world. He looks at his disciples and he charges them. Well, he challenges them. He gives them a blessing and he says, you know, continue my work of putting holes in the darkness of sin in this world. Which is what he charges us to do. When we do that, when we live out our lives being salty Christians and being light to the world, we do begin to be light for our communities and for our world. We will salt the lives of others with our good deeds. But as we know, it only takes a little water to dilute salt, and not every candle or bulb will burn forever. The same is true about that new car feeling, we just can't keep it forever. It's true about our faith lives that they can become diluted. They can lose their saltiness. They can start to become dim. There probably isn't a single action or event that people can look at that causes them to fall away from their faith lives or being active in their church or being active in ministry. Usually it's a matter of drift. Slowly over time they move away. They their faith lives lose power. They lose steam. The wind goes out of their sails slowly. Their saltiness fails. And you can't point to one particular incident. It's just something that happens over time to a lot of people. And yet, our world is filled with such bad taste and and so much blandness and so much darkness in the world that we need to let our light shine. We need to season our relationships with our love of Christ. The question the church continually faces is, how do we let our light shine? How do we maintain our saltiness? As I said, just like the Beatitudes were statements of blessings, so are these statements your salt and you are light. As followers of Christ, we are already salt. We are already elementally good because we were created by God. And we are already light. We are elementally good because 
we are created by God and the light of Christ burns within us. And because we already have that reality, we have to fight the battle of remaining on the shelf or hidden under a bushel basket. Jesus says, what good is a light that's hidden? What good is salt if it loses its taste? We each are salted in our own special ways. We each have the light of Christ that began in our baptisms and burns within us. But there are so many voices in the world that want to dilute our saltiness and to snuff out our light. And my friends, sometimes those voices come from within us. We have to defeat those voices by reminding ourselves that Jesus has blessed us. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You've chosen to come here today. You've chosen to come to express your faith in Jesus Christ. But many of you do more than just come to worship each week. You are salt and you are light in many, many ways that many do not see every day in your lives, in your families, in your communities, in your personal existence. So having heard Jesus call us salt of the earth and light of the world, how can we live into that blessing every day? Well, I have four elements to suggest for you. The first element is be present. Be present. Jesus follows up his you are the light of the world with the description of how to use light, how it cannot be hid under a basket, how light exposes a city that's built on a hill. And then he follows that up with that phrase that we use in our baptismal service, let your light so shine before others that they will see your good works that glorify your Father in heaven. In other words, Jesus challenges us to be present as people who bear Christ's light in the world. Do not hide your faith. Live it every day. Let it shine every day. Be present as the light of Christ. Second element is seek purity. The Christ candle that stands beside the altar is lit at baptisms, it's lit at funerals, and it's lit during the Easter season. It stands for the presence of Christ's light among us. It is a pure, bright light of Christ. When Jesus stands on the mountain of his transfiguration, Jesus turns a white color of light that is so brilliant, it's, it's a light, it's a brightness that's never been seen on this earth. Nothing on earth can match that light. And then he says, let your light shine before others. That light is a reflection of Christ's light. It's not our light that we let shine. It's the pure light of Christ that we reflect, that burns within us. That is why our deeds that we do in the name of Christ shine forth to others. But it can only be a light that seeks to be as pure as Christ's light. We cannot produce that light on our own. It needs to be fanned by the winds of the Spirit. We bear the light of Christ. This is what we strive to do with our good deeds. To seek to reflect the purity of Christ's light. Third element, persevere. Jesus says you are salt of the earth. In Jesus' time, it would have been nearly impossible. They wouldn't have understood that salt can lose its saltiness. So Jesus says that. We know different today. I think Jesus was using a, a hyperbole. Perhaps what he was suggesting is that as followers of Christ, we should remember first, God has secured our futures in the kingdom of heaven. So therefore, we should never give up spreading that salt. Remember the picture of the frog that is being swallowed by the pelican? Have you seen this cartoon? 
the frog being swallowed by a pelican, and the frog has its hands around the throat of the pelican. And the sign, the little phrase underneath says, never give up. I guess you have to see it to really understand. I don't draw a good image. Right? We need to persevere. We need to persevere in our faith. Never give up being salt and light for Christ. Finally, the fourth element, preserve. As I said, it's almost impossible possible for salt to lose its saltiness. It will continue to season. It will continue to preserve even to make our roads safer when PennDOT throws all the salt, right, on our roads so we don't slip around. So just as salt will remain salt, we must endure in our sufferings fighting the good fight of the faith to not let our faith lives go stale or to let our lights go dim. I think we each should keep a salt log and a light log in our lives. I think we should take time every day to sort of reflect upon the ways that we have been salt and the ways that we have been light in the world, light and salt in people's lives. It's not a brag log. It's not something that you can take a look at and say, oh, look at all the good deeds I've done today. No, no. I think it's good to keep track of the ways that God works through you, ways that God works through you as salt and light, ways that God is using you to season the lives, to be the light of Christ for others. Being salt and light is as simple as helping without being asked, respecting someone else's opinions and emotions without shouting at them, giving food to the hungry, clothing to the naked, honoring those in need, and respecting the earth. Being salt and light grows out of unconditional love. Just as God's love for us does not have strings attached, so we must be light and salt without a thought of who, what, when, or where we choose to be. But wouldn't it be nice if at the end of the day or at the end of the week we could just reflect and thank God for the ways that we can be salt and light for others. Don't be afraid to salt all of your relationships with Christ's love and to dress yourself in the light of Christ every day. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to sing. Now, this next hymn is short, so, Teresa, we're going to do... Verse 1 and 3. Verse 1 and 3. Break now the bread of light. Number 515.